What's up? It's Sam. So today I thought I would do something a little bit different because uh, I just got a new camera, which you may notice the difference in quality, which is awesome. But I figured I would do a bookshelf tour because I have been watching a lot of them and I think they're really interesting and I wanted to try one of my own. So here's my bookshelf. Um, I'm only doing really like two shelves of it today because the rest of my shelves are just covered in junk and I don't want to show that because they're pretty dirty. So I'm just going to do two shelves today and maybe I'll do my other bookcase uh, sometime soon. So let's get started. Alright, so this is my bookshelf. I've moved a little bit of stuff off so it's just easier to take the books down. So up at the top, um, we're going to start with Interview with the Vampire. Now, this is one of two copies of Interview with the Vampire that I have. Um, and the next one is on my bottom shelf. So you'll see that in a minute. But I got this one because of the art on the front, which I think is interesting. So that's Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. My next set of books is the Ottoman series by Ayakano. And I have one through five here. And also in manga series, I have Yatsuba by Kiyohiko Azuma. And I have one through five on that as well. And here's what the front cover of the one looks like, because I think it's super cute. The next one I have is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. I actually haven't read this one, but I want to sometime in the future. Also in manga or graphic novels, I have Night School, the Weird Books by... Svetlana Chmakova, I think that's how you say her name, but this is the front cover of the first one, and this is what the second one looks like. In manga as well, I have Fruits Basket by Natsuki Takaya, and here's the first cover of that one, or the cover of the first book, anyway. Of course, I have Twilight, the graphic novel, and I have volume one and two but my second one doesn't have a desk cover on it so obviously it's just a black book also here i have the season one dvd of black butler and of course i haven't watched that either and it still has a plastic on it i also have gone with the wind which i haven't read and it has expanded i guess a little bit <laughs> due to humidity or something but that's by margaret mitchell Next, I have Never Bite a Boy on the First Date by Tamara Summers. This is a vampire novel, and I think it's just a romance novel. Next, I have Twelve Again by Sue Corbett, and I loved this novel. This was, like, one of my favorite books I've ever read. Next, I have The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave. And I had to read this for school, but I think it's a really important book to read. Next, I have The House on Mango Street by Sanda Cisneros. And this I also had to read for school, but I actually liked it a lot, so. And another vampire book, uh, Real Vampires Have Curves by Jerry Bartlett. I have not read this one either, so I can't tell you how good it is or how bad it is, but it's a vampire book, so. Next I have my favorite poetry book from when I was a kid, A Pizza the Size of the Sun by Jack Pretlutsky and drawings by James Stevenson. I loved this book. Excuse the stain right there. I don't know what that is, but it's probably something from my childhood. But it's got all these poems and drawings in it, and I just, I loved this book when I was younger. So, And I also have The Second Life, The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner, and Eclipse Novella by Stephanie Meyer. And I have not read this one. This book was amazing. This is also known as Rowan Poey by Ralph Fletcher. It is so good. It's about a guy who goes undercover at this like prestigious school, I think. Um, and it's just a really good book. So if you get the chance to read this one, definitely do. This is Do What You Are by Paul D. Tiger and Barbara Barron. And next I have Matched by Ali Condi, which, surprise, I have not read. Um, I think it's about like a futuristic dystopia kind of thing. and. I'm just not that interested in that stuff anymore, but I still have it, so I don't know, maybe I'll give it to charity or something, I don't know. Alright, so this is my second shelf on my bookshelf, and as you can tell, I've got a ton of books right here 
that I'm gonna have to take down. Um, and who knows if I'll get them back in the right order, but who cares. The next book I have is not Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. It is actually Nickel and Dimed by Barbara Ehrenreich, which if you have to read this for school like I did, um, it was a really interesting novel, not a novel, a book to read, and it helped me learn a lot. It helped me learn a lot about the fast food industry and minimum wage jobs and how hard they are for the people that are actually working them. My next book is New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. The next two books I have are The Masqueraders by Georgette Heyer and These Old Shades by Georgette Heyer. Uh, I believe these are historical fiction novels, but I haven't gotten a chance to read them yet, although I would like to. This is The Vampire Armand by Anne Rice. Next, I have a DVD, again, unopened, and it's Lucky Star, which I have not watched yet. The next book on my shelf is Stiff by Mary Roach, and it's a really interesting novel, not novel, book about, um, what they do to human cadavers. This next stack is four DVDs that I have. It's Bewitched and Hotel Transylvania and Dark Shadows and Shakespeare in Love, which is like one of my favorite movies, even though it's like three hours long. I also have Interview with the Vampire on DVD. This, and I actually have two copies of these and one is actually the movie cover. I also have another copy of Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice, and as you can tell, I read this one and dog-eared the pages, which I feel like for mass market paperbacks like these isn't really that big of a deal. Next, I have The Tale of the Body Thief by Anne Rice, and it's the, I guess it's book four. It's book four of the Vampire Chronicles, and then also I have Memnot the Devil by Anne Rice, and it was super creepy, so I put a sticky note over that and then this on the other side because I could not stand to keep staring at it. Starting on this side, I've got Lies My Teacher Told Me by James W. Lowen. Next, I have Smile, which is a graphic novel by Raina Telgemeier, if that's how you say her name. Next, I have a very worn copy of Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk, or Funke, I'm not really sure, but I mean like... Look at that. <laughs> I loved this book so much when I was younger. Ooh, this one I like. I haven't read it, but me and my brother are watching the Sliders TV series, and I really like it so far. So this one I haven't read yet, but it's Sliders, but it's a novel by Brad Lena Weaver. Next, I have a Quantum Leap novel because I love Quantum Leap. And this one is The Wall, and I believe it's about the Berlin Wall. I haven't read it, but it looked interesting and it was about Quantum Leap, so I got it. I also have a couple more Quantum Leap novels over here, which I'll get to. Next, I have Disney Pixar Brave, and I don't think I've watched this one yet, even though it is opened. I mean, obviously I've watched the movie, but I don't think I've watched this DVD. Now, this book I absolutely loved when I read it, and this was Coffee, Coffee House Angel by Suzanne Selfers. It's about this angel who helps this girl out, and it's just a really cute, like, romance-type story. Now, here is Dracula by Bram Stoker, and I, I started reading it, but it was kind of tough to read because of the vocabulary and just the way it's written, because it's written such a long time ago, and I was looking up videos and summaries on it, and apparently... It's just not as good as the movie. I mean, I'm sure it's great in terms of literature, but for me, I was like, you know, I don't really care that much to actually read the book. Next, I have all my Quantum Leap novels. I've got Random Measures, The Novel, and Pulitzer. And these I just got because I love Quantum Leap. This is Dear Sister, and it's a collection of letters to a sister in Alabama during the Civil War, and I guess it was, I guess comments were added by Frank Anderson Chapel, but I was given this by a friend, and so I'm planning on reading it sometime. Next, I have The Jacksonian Era by Robert V. Remy, and this is about, um, it's an American history book, and I had to read it for school, but 
I really enjoyed it because I really enjoy history sometimes depending on you know how well the book is actually compiled so this one is the American Revolution a history by Gordon S Wood and it's about the American Revolution and I had to read it for school so I made tons of little notes if you can see that I don't even know what someone says but I made tons of notes because I had to summarize it so I mean it's a good book if you're interested in history and it's interesting and thought-provoking this is the Prince and the Pauper by Mark Twain and I got about halfway through it before I just stopped reading it it's not that it was a bad book it was just very hard to read when I was like 13 because I didn't really understand what they were saying because of the writing style but I might give it another try sometime now here is Junie B. Jones is a graduation girl and I actually took this out of my school library when I was like I don't know in third grade or something I lost it paid the fine and then found it so I have a library book from my elementary school just lying around my room now this was an interesting book this is you say more than you think by Janine Driver with Mariska Van Alst and it's about um, body language and reading body language so if you're interested in that this is a really good book to read I think this is pain and profits by Jan R McTavish and it's about um, the history of headaches and its remedies in America and I started reading this one but thinking about headaches gave me a headache so I'm not sure if I'll ever finish this without getting a headache this is by the bombs early light by Paul Boyer and I had to read this for a humanities class I just took and it was okay I didn't particularly like the class so this book was kind of like overshadowed by that fact but I mean it's an interesting look at the American thought and culture during the age of like atomic war and the Cold War. Next I have Florida's First Coast, A History in Images and it's just a couple of Florida cities and some pictures from it and I thought it was interesting because I love old pictures and most old things so to have this book where I could actually see old pictures of where I live that's super cool to me. Next I have The Paleo Solution by Rob Wolf. Um, this is a really really good book especially if you're interested in, in paleo. I thought it was just really interesting and I liked the style of writing too. So that's the end of my bookshelf tour. If you liked it please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more from me and be told when I make a new video just hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!